Uh, Dan, as you know, the UAE has been investing quite extensively in artificial intelligence, and it makes a lot of sense to start uh, teaching children at a very young age uh, how to use AI and how AI is going to benefit them and how to use it correctly and ethically. Another underlying factor is the following. We studied the advent of technology across the last few decades. And we saw that if we don't react appropriately, and that's what we didn't do when it came to social media uh, and didn't transform our education process from there, we were not able to equip students with the right skills to use that tool correctly. So we wanted to make sure that today students are aware of the downfalls of using uh, AI or their limitations, the ethical considerations, the biases that are built into those systems, how to discern them, how to critically approach the utilization of artificial intelligence. Indeed, Minister, and when you think about this more deeply, of course, nation states are all looking at how to incorporate artificial intelligence into their education system. The UAE is a real first mover on this, but how do you balance this ambitious new initiative with your own warning this week that we may not yet be there when it comes to actually having the capacity to use AI wisely and ethically? So that, that's why we looked at this when designing this curriculum, we looked at the factors that we knew about. So the known knowns and what we what was imperative for us is to focus on AI literacy. This this curriculum focuses from a very young age. So kindergarten students will be taking role play. They will look at uh, mechanisms to discern what smart machines are, what are robots, how do robots work, how do they react, who teaches them what to do? Do they have feelings if they make a mistake? Uh, who, who's responsible to fix that mistake and so on. And then you take that and move that forward while progressing. You ensure that students understand how to use it ethically and more importantly for students that are at later grades, those that will go into university, those that we know will definitely use AI. We show them how to prompt engineer. So how do you write the right prompts? How do you analyze the data that comes or the information that you receive from AI? How do you use it avoiding plagiarism and how do you ensure that you infuse it across different uh, uh, mechanisms of um, of their daily work dan uh, what, what what i was talking about when referring to uh, a lack of understanding of how to infuse it is how do you use it as a tool to further advance education and that's why we broke down ai in education into four different fields one is AI literacy, and that's what this curriculum covers. We also look at um, AI as a tool to improve personalized learning and to, to improve differentiated learning in the classroom as a tool to support teachers. Uh, and that's something that's currently in development. We are also looking at uh, AI to make school operations more seamless and remove over burdens that are currently on school um, leadership and also teachers and educators across, uh, across the board. Uh, and also in terms of analytics and teaching students how to design and develop AI. Indeed, and Minister, you also studied computer science yourself, so you know perhaps more about this than most other people. You've said AI is unlike any previous tech shift. I think we're also seeing that play out in the public markets right now as well, just given the huge interest and investment that we're seeing in this space. Talk to me about the end goal here and the translation for the UAE. Do you see this initiative as a way to also future-proof the Emirati workforce against what could be really significant AI-driven disruption? This is not future-proofing. This I'll call it as the first stepping stone towards future-proofing our work, uh, our workforce. What we're actually working on is transforming education. The reason I said that AI is a paradigm shift, and AI has needs to transform what our education um, sector is meant to teach, and that's the outcomes. Today, we are transforming our education system to focus on skills. If we're talking about future-proofing um, our workforce, our students need to graduate critical thinkers. They need to graduate with great resilience. They need to be great communicators. They need to have very strong analytical and creative skills. This means that you've the paradigm shift that we're doing in education today, it's no longer about the knowledge that they acquire in the classroom. It's about how they utilize that knowledge. How do they acquire that knowledge? How do they discern the viability and reliability of that knowledge? How do they use it in their daily lives? How can they use artificial intelligence and any other technological advancement to move forward. 
Dan, our education systems around the world has not done monumental shifts since the inception of formal K-12 education. We are relooking how education needs to look like, where our focus needs to be. We're even relooking the competency framework of our educators because our educators are no longer only deliverable deliverables of knowledge, but they are fostering um, our future workforce and also fostering their skills and in honing them and enhancing them. Underlying that as well are, is a value system that's very important to the core personality uh, of those students as they transition forward. And that's why we're being very um, conscious about when to introduce technology into classrooms, uh, what forms of technologies are being introduced, ensuring that cognitive development is developed prior to the introduction to technologies. That's something that's imperative to understand properly, to understand the, psycholo the psychology of development of children and to know when to use the right tool at the right time without compromising development of core skills, especially those around reasoning. And just quickly, what does this mean for educators? You touched on this br just briefly, but expand on it for me. I know teachers who live and work in the UAE, they're probably thinking, well, hang on a second, am I equipped with the skills to be able to deliver on this vision? What does it mean for educators? So again, we're working um, with the Emirates College for the Advancement of Education together with the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence to understand how do we first, the same way that we're working on AI literacy for students, we need to work on AI literacy for educators. And we actually want them to use it in designing uh, their classroom materials, in designing uh, their classroom instruction methodology. It removes a large burden and a very time consuming burden on teachers today. And the next shift is we're relooking the competency framework. We want to ensure that our teachers are equipped for any curriculum change and any enhancement and development of uh, curriculum. And something that we've put in, in this curriculum itself is we are giving educators a voice. So we'll be implementing this from September right. all the way to around March. And then we are going to get the feedback of our educators in terms of a de its development and implementation mechanism and continue to enhance this curriculum as we're moving forward.